he broke away from the you know little Angry Bird hopping thing and and showed him the program he uses to teach the two-dimensional gaming there and, and gave him a demonstration of it and let him open it up on their computers and um, gave them all bags with t-shirts and stuff in it, including a flash drive that has student-created games on it. They thought that was, I had to drag my students out of there. Oh, that is wonderful. How many were it was, I brought seven kids in Mr. Elliott. Great. I'm going to take that. Um, what is that place called? Northwest Career and Technical Academy? Tech Academy. Tech Academy. NCTA, they call themselves. Northwest Career and Technical Academy. All right. And they have a, a summer program. It's right after our school's up. It goes for three weeks. And they will take eighth graders. And it's free. All right, I see that it's four o'clock. This is cool. So I haven't muted anybody, um, and we'll leave it that way unless it gets it gets um, noisy because I like to have a conversation. Um, and I um, so Greg was just talking about the um, sorry I am really tired. <laughs> Greg was just talking about the hour of code and the. Um, Northwest Career and Tech Academy actually had a, I don't know if they called it an open house or what they called it. What was that on Wednesday? It was really like an hour of code event. Okay, hour of code event. And, and they are having an open house, I think, in either January or February. Okay. And so they invited the middle school students. Did they invite high school as well? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, and Greg was just saying it's an incredible event for those of you who are just jumping in. Um, and then also that there is a summer program three weeks right after school's out. Yeah, same same guy, Mr. Portia uh, says he's a Digiton guy. Yeah, okay. I'm in. Three. Right now she's for, hey, uh, for nine. So it would be um, eight through 12th graders, right? Right. Okay. Very cool. And then, um, and I see here Jason did some um, coding with um, with two of his classes, and they're working on going through those lessons. I wonder what the uh, prize is going to be. Does anybody know? Actually, um, it's uh, it's not my classes. It's my my children, oh, my first children. grader and my that's third better. grader. That's even better. <laughs> oh, that's great! Wonderful. So um, what we did was I told them that we would take a look at it, and if it was age appropriate, then they could do it. And I actually had to force myself to leave the room because I wanted to get in there and and show them how to do it. But so much of coding is just trying it until you get it right. Yeah. But um, I left the room for about 20 minutes, and I came back because I heard my first grader just giggling, and he wrote this loop that made the guy on the screen draw a square and then rotate one degree and then draw another square and he just put it on loop so the guy kept spinning around he thought it was hilarious that is great that is wonderful and and those pro the tutorials were written in such a friendly way that they really are very not directed kind of stuff so that's wonderful so if you're on and you didn't get to try any of the coding stuff this week i really highly recommend that and um, it's it's fun. I know Sharon. I see Sharon on here, and and Sharon shared that um, they were going to do some at uh, Madison this week. And Sharon um, got hung up. Uh, well, she started looking into it one night and got um, sucked into the coding. I did the same thing. So, oh, cool. The 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 um, prizes if the kids go through all of the lessons. Jason's putting that on the um, on the notes. Sharon, are you able to talk? Did you get it? I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Maybe not. Okay. I hear her. I hear it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, we have, we've been doing it with first and second graders, 
in the library where there's a couple extra of us and they're working in partners anyway. Um, of course, they're not. Most of them are not finishing it, but otherwise, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders are all doing it in lab this week, and they're so excited about it. Um, I like the fact that they can go on and and do other lessons beyond the you know the twenty puzzles that are there. Um, yeah, and I've got teachers excited that they're going to get some Dropbox um, space as well. And I know that I've heard that the high school, especially, I assume the high school must be doing something with this, that um, <clears throat> that the high school kids need Dropbox space as well in their classes. So, OK. That's, that's great. I just think it's just really fun. And the, it's a perfect thing to happen in our labs because, again, it's, that, it's so self-directed that Kids can really get into that. Perfect. OK. Um, I'm just looking at my notes. The other cool thing that happened this week besides um, our participation in the Hour of Code was our celebration of learning collaborative presentation. And I've got a link to it here. I'm not going to go through it right now. But that's really fun to look at. Um, it's neat to see. We had, we had people from every school who participated in this. So it's a really nice representation of what's going on in our district. And uh, it's going to be on our the front page of our web page as soon as we make sure all the kids are cleared for us to to publish it. I'm also oh, it is gonna, Go ahead. Oh, oh OK. I, I'll have to ask permission. I want to put, I did student present, uh, students did presentations with, uh, that they built collaboratively with Google presentations. And I, I videoed them. So I'm going to put a couple of those on there. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. That would be great. So is that? But they're middle schoolers. I want to give them a heads up so they're not too deadly embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> I heard somebody say Martha. Sharon? I was just wondering if that is going to continue throughout the year that people can keep adding things? We can certainly, yeah, people can certainly continue to add things. OK, so we could encourage our teachers to, hey, if you haven't done it before and you see these now, maybe you can continue. Yeah, think. that would be great. And I'm going to try to think of some other things like that that get us kind of sharing in that way. A simple little piece that, you know, makes something bigger. I, I'm really excited about it. So, but yeah, it can continue to grow. The, um, the brewing system has already been given away, but we can still continue to share our, share our experiences. So. Okay, and I just wanted to point out that our next uh, webinar is on the 9th of January, and then our next face-to-face -face is actually February 13th, which is two days after we pass our levy, which is what Tim is going to talk about here in a minute. And um, as we go along, and right now we're all, we're, we're, none of us are muted, and that seems to be working fine right now. But if you, have, if you think of a question or you want to make sure that Tim or I cover something or you want to make sure everybody else knows this cool thing that you guys are doing or you learned about, please just type either in the, the notes or in the chat window so that we can um, make sure that we cover what you need to have covered for the meeting. I really appreciate you being here. All right? Okay. I, th I think I'm going to turn it over to Tim. Everybody want to hear from Tim? Thank you, Martha. <laughs> I, OK, let's see. OK, so I'm turning it over to Tim. Uh, OK, what do I want to show here? I need to show my cell document. All right. So this is the document that had been presented to the Mount Vernon School District School Board it, when they were discussing what option they were going to choose moving forward for our future technology levy. Um, it's important to note that we won't see I'm getting yelled at. Hold on a sec. Can you guys all see my document okay? Yes, I can. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, they have decided to go with option three. So there's not a lot of details here because it's purposely um, it was purposefully uh, kept simplistic, but you can see here option three is the third uh, 
highest of uh, the choices they had presented to them. Um, Sorry, it's telling me my screen is being paused. One sec, Aaron. I see if that works. Okay, um, so. Um, if you look over on the right hand side, it kind of breaks down what, uh, what that means and basically what you're looking at is uh, the medium expansion. What is going on with my computer? I keep getting a window pop up. Sorry, I apologize. I'm not sure what's going on. We're not saying that when you... We don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's telling me move this window away from the screen sharing screen. I'm not sure what that means. Hold on here. I'm going to close some things. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if it's just better if I just share my whole desktop instead of the application. So while you're trying to figure that out, does that sure. the number in parentheses mean the number of labs and the number yeah. of cameras and things like that, or does it mean the amount of money that's being spent? Yeah, so there's two very specific things going on here. Um, the expansion of mobile technology and the security project. Um, if you look at this option one, can you guys all see what I'm doing now? Yes. Uh, it, this is required. This is included in all of the options, so all of this would stay standard. Um, that means that our six-year replacement cycle for desktops would continue to exist. Um, it also is going to include now a four-year replacement cycle on laptops. Um, I'll go into some more details uh, in the minute, but um, so all the things that we have now, plus a few extra things, are included in this option one. So it covers licensing, it covers existing support staff, it covers. Uh, uh, equipment replacement of a uh, replacement of damaged equipment which has never existed before in the levy, uh, believe it or not. Um, and then they chose option three, which also adds uh, the security project, which you can see here um, would give a hundred over the life of the levy a three-year levy. And it's important to note that this is a three-year levy, where in traditional terms we would be talking about a two-year levy. Um, 102 cameras would be placed throughout the school district, and 27. Um, Keyless uh, entries. Access point. Uh, keyless entries. Yes. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. They um, went with the high option for uh, the security project. So, uh, 191 cameras and 47 electronic access points. So, what that would really mean is basically all the external main entryways at every site would have keyless entry. You'd have some kind of um, keypad and a like a an ID card or a fob or something like that to let you into the building. Um, and that uh, being so, that's this, the new levy is not just called the technology levy; it's the technology and security levy. And so, it's going to be about about eight, yeah, I know, very clever. About eight hundred thousand dollars of the levy over three year period is going to that security project. Any questions on the security project? I actually have a question. Sure. Um, the keyless entry mm -hmm. does that include um, non schools? like down at Tech, District Office, Special Services? Uh, I believe so, but I'm not 100% sure. I know it, the cameras does include some of the non-school sites. I'm not 100% okay. certain on the keyless entry. So. Okay. Important. I know, obviously, the priority is kids, um, but yeah. I just was curious. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Any other questions on the security project? Okay, uh, moving on then. Um, so the big thing here is the mobile technology expansion. They went with the medium project, which is uh, about $2 million, um, which is a pretty significant increase. And you'll see it includes 41 labs, and that's a 30 mobile device lab that is quoted there. It's quoted at basically our current iPad price, but it is not necessarily going to be I or iPads. It's not necessarily going to be iPads. Um, we just use a highball figure to come up with an estimate. 
like I said, we won't be um, probably seeing this funding for another year and a half before we, it'll be another year and a half at least until we start seeing any of this money roll in. So we didn't want to pigeonhole ourselves into a specific kind of technology because who knows what's going to come out between now and then. Um, there's going to be 21 labs for the high school, um, 18 labs for the middle school. If you look at the elementary number, what that basically is is uh, one lab for every grade level at every school from one through sixth grade at the elementary. Um, that's hey, important Jim? to note. Yes, go ahead. So now that uh, sixth grade is moving to the middle school, does that mean one of those labs goes up to middle school, or how does that work? Uh, I, yeah, good point. Uh, I, was ch I was actually just making my way there. Um, we're not really sure exactly what that means because when we were moving this forward, there was no decision yet on that specific thing. But the budget does account for basically six labs for sixth grade, which could mean that that is six additional labs for the middle school, theoretically. Um, that's not guaranteed, obviously, but that was what the estimate was there for. So, yeah, you could consider some additional six labs moving to the middle school. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, so the real big thing is that we have had a lot of success with the mobile labs and um, we want to continue that trend, but again, we don't want to have ourselves pigeonholed into any specific technology, so this could be Chromebooks, it could be iPads, it could be slates, it could be surfaces for Microsoft. It really could be anything, and um, so certainly uh, this team we're going to be looking for a lot of input from you guys on what's working and what's not working. Um, I'm going to switch over here to my details panel, and you can kind of get a little bit deeper breakdown of what what is all involved here and what the costs are. So um, the assumption here is that each cart is costing about uh, $20,000. Um, you can see this number here. Um, and so that is a, a little bit of a highball figure for what we would normally expect, but again, that was intentional. Um, we have a six-year placement cycle on all desktop computers throughout the school district, so it doesn't matter what it was, if it's a donated piece of equipment or a lab system or a secretary station, all six years. Uh -oh. Added this uh, laptop computer replacement cycle at four years, so any laptop will be funded at a four-year placement cycle. So. These are the estimates on how many of each of those would be happening for a year. Um, projectors and document cameras are also slated for a six-year replacement cycle, and iOS devices are slated to be put on a four-year replacement cycle, which we've never had before, and a replacement cycle for iPads built into the levy. So I thought that was an important piece. Um, one of the things that we didn't discuss uh, on the other page is that there will be a uh, mobile cart for each library of 30 devices built into the levy. So at each site, one mobile cart for the libraries. Great idea. Uh, yeah, the, we, we really wanted to push that one home. And then um, with all that massive expansion of equipment, we'll be bringing on, uh, assuming that the, the levy passes, uh, two additional ETAs to help support the big infusion of technology. Any questions up to this point? Questions or comments? I've got a comment. Sure. Uh, I love the ATA idea, especially with that many cards out there. And yeah. then, uh, Tim and Martha, maybe you could speak more to this than I, but I, I just, we really want to make sure that people vote. And it's not just that they vote the way we want them to, but that the numbers are there. Because the levies can fail for lack of numbers, not just no votes. So in what ways can, and not just we as teachers in our off time, but in what ways can district technology be used to push people, not uh, either yes levy or no levy, but as a way of civic engagement, how is there, do we have leeway to let people, uh, you know, encourage people to vote? And maybe even it's like Martha's project on the website about showing what we're doing with technology and all the good things that happen when people vote yes for that. Um, yeah, you know, there are some really good resources. Um, obviously, because we're it, with public employees, we have to be careful about what we are uh, uh, promoting and not promoting on the clock. Um, I don't have it readily available, but uh, let's see. Actually, I do here. There is an election guide, do and don't, for school district employees. 
So um, uh, the biggest thing is you can't obviously tell people how to vote one way or another um, during regular work time, but um, during non-work hours you can uh, do all kinds of things like uh, uh, make materials available to them to inform them about what the levy is doing and what's it, what it's bringing in. Um, you can, uh, again, most of this is uh, going to be about non-school time, but you can wear campaign buttons at work, so you can wear the little yes to school things. Uh, I think that as far as making information available uh, online and digitally, if you put together any of your own information or you work with any teams on that kind of stuff, uh, whether it's yes or no, you know, that is really powerful because like you said, just getting people to vote is good. We want to know if people like this or not. We don't want to push this down the community <coughs> throat something they're excited about. Um, I know that there's an, a citizens committee that gets together that you could certainly be involved in, and I'm sure they would love to have people coming in and speaking their minds about it one way or another. Any other questions on that vein? I'll uh, see if I can send out this document actually to this team about what you guys are allowed to do and not do. I, I don't know if I have a digital copy, but I can certainly scan it and send it out. <coughs> okay. Um, so uh, just to move along a little bit, currently we have uh, four ETAs and one bench tech that is funded are funded by the levy. So obviously, if the levy didn't pass, uh, we would lose access to that support staff, um, which would be a pretty big deal. That's all of the building level technicians that we have. Um, they would be that are they're completely funded by the levy. So um, pretty pretty big thing there. Um, one thing that I mentioned on that we've never had before is. Uh, Replacement of equipment. So uh, now, if something breaks due to you know, and, and it's outside of warranty, it's a it's a modest budget for a three year cycle, but um, we do have uh, the means to be able to actually replace stuff that breaks um, without having to tap into some alternative alternative funding sources. And hopefully, it, that means it will be less impactful on your guys' uh, building FDE budgets. Um, I I don't want to get too much on the song and dance side of things, but uh, you know we want to make sure we're doing the right things for the school districts, uh, or for the for the community and for the kids and for you guys and doing what what will work best for you. And I think that as a district, we really want to see what it's, you know long term. We want to make sure that technology be it a one-to-one -one or whatever, is readily available to anybody and everybody that wants to take advantage of it and that can take advantage of it. And so to us, mobile labs is the way we can do that given the financial constraints that we're under. Um, if you have thoughts and feelings on that, though, we would really love to hear it. And that's kind of my song and dance. Any, any questions or comments or thoughts on uh, the levy or where we're going with the technology purchases in the levy? I think it sounds awesome. Yeah, it'll be a very big infusion of technology if it passes. Uh, I mean, the biggest levy we ever had for technology was uh, this one, about $2.5 million over uh, two years, or I mean, uh, a little less than 2.5 over two years. And um, you know, we've been able to do a lot with it, and we're still even seeing some of that coming in. But we are going to be talking about something like closer to $2 million every year coming into the district for technology should this pass. It's a pretty big increase. Yeah. Um, Okay, Tim, you should not be muted. Okay. Um, I feel like All right, any other questions? Can people hear me? Yes. Okay. Any other questions from me? Otherwise, I, I think that that's all I've got for you guys. All right, so...
like I said, next um, our next meeting is January 9th. Um, anything that you'd like for us to talk about, please uh, jump in and um, and let let us know. Um, anything you have to share, this would be great. Like I I was saying um, in Tracy's Tracy's thing here. Um, she was oh no never mind I'm not Tracy's thing. Uh, below that I was just. Um, Pointing out anything we can do to publicly share the power of tech in our district. So, um, if you guys are doing coding stuff, let the newspaper know. Um, whatever's happening in your buildings that you can share and let the let the newspapers know. Put it out on the web. Anything we can do like that is um, is going to be really important. And that's all I have too. Are we good? All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have have good a good night. And if we don't talk before then, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, all that kind of good stuff. And to you. Okay, bye-bye.